Okay, this is a, a quick review of the new to me second owner uh, Kodak stereo camera I got off eBay uh, for about 20 bucks the other day. Uh, this was listed as uh, for parts repair by the uh, seller here. I was looking at this and uh, well, I don't notice any obvious uh, breaks on the bake light or anything else. Pretty much that's the uh, major damage there where it looks like there used to be a flash gun attached to the bottom of this thing. Uh, another thing that uh, I noticed on here is that uh, you can take these little rings off of here to put filters on, I guess, if uh, they're available still. Yeah, both of those should come off of both lenses here. And the one thing that I really liked about this camera is that uh, that viewfinder uh, with a little bubble level on there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what it looks like in a little bit. Uh, but first, I'd like uh, just to uh, take a quick look at the camera here. Let's see, about the only damage on the seat on top of here is that little corner, little scuff on there. Now this one here, um, it opened up pretty. It opens up pretty easy. On my other one, it kind of sticks when you do this. See, so this one pops open pretty easy. And uh, this turns uh, rather, rather easy right here. Oh, there we go. So there you go. To cock the shutter now. Let's see. Let me get to the uh, shutter release here and let's see. So we can see what it. I can't see anything in the sun here. Let's see. I still didn't like it. Okay. Let's see about that. Let's try that. There we go. Take a look at that when I uh, turn the little wheel. Okay, shutter's cocked there. Let me open this F stop up. You can see the uh, irises are pretty easy uh, to manipulate. Take another one here. Let's look through this one now. Hmm. Okay, well, there's that. this here back and uh, yeah let me go ahead and get to the look through the viewfinder here in a little bit unfortunately if I try to do it here with this it'll uh, overexpose let me see where's that thing I can't see there we go let's see what we can see yeah see doesn't look very very good outside here so I'm going to go inside and uh Take a picture of a picture and let you see what the viewfinder looks like. Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, show you about how big these things are. I mean, you'd be surprised uh, how small this camera is going to be when you get it in the mail here. Yeah, get these uh, out of the way here. As you can see, it's approximately seven inches by about three inches tall. It's not really big. I was quite surprised when I got this thing. It's about the size of a, a disposable camera with a, a little bit, well, it's a little bit wider, but about the same height. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than this, but wow. Yeah. This is an example of what the uh, cameras uh, are capable of taking uh, pictures at. As you can see, they are more of a square format. Uh, this camera here takes the photographs at uh, 
a size of 24 by 23 millimeters on the film strip normally that's fine if you're using slide film but if you're using color print film this is the way they're gonna come out uh, these I developed them over at Walgreens and it seems that their machine is not uh, set up to uh, go ahead and print these photographs uh, it's uh, set up to print the uh, uh, standard full frame 35 millimeter which this is not as I mentioned this is 24 by 23 size uh, the standard photograph uh, from 35 millimeters I believe is 24 by 36 which is a little bit wider and this is what what comes out so even if you get the CD you're probably going to be doing some Photoshop work Yeah, you're going to be doing some Photoshop work to go ahead and get the pieces from the other photographs and then uh, paste them together so you can uh, actually get some good photographs on there. Or you can uh, simply scan them at home and take them over there and they should be able to go ahead and print those for you. But as you can see, you might be doing a little bit of trimming on the photograph though. But that's okay. This is my other camera that I got on eBay uh, for pennies on the dollar. Uh, this one did not mention that uh, it needed work on this, but uh, it does. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what's going on with this. I'm going to show you the uh, slow shutters and what they look like when they're real sticky. And you need to uh, get this thing serviced, which might cost uh, quite a bit, actually. Because you pretty much have to take everything apart and clean it out and lube it. Let me go ahead and open the back here, and I've got this set up at uh, one two hundredth of a second. Let me see when it focuses. There we go. Okay, one two hundredth of a second there, and I've opened up the irises all the way. Okay, I've already got the uh, shutter set. Let me go ahead and press the button here, and that is not one two hundredth of a second so there you are that's what it looks like when these things are sticky uh, you can uh, set the shutter two ways uh, you can turn these uh, sprockets here uh, you can also go down here to the uh, manual shutter setting here and uh, move that over let me show you what happens here you can manually push that also with your finger if you don't if you want but sometimes it's kind of tough uh, let's see until it clicks and there's your shutter button on top there and that's it that's all you gotta do so when uh, you encounter one of these uh, sellers with these such incompetent descriptions as I've never tested it before because I don't have film, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't need film to go ahead and test this. As you can see, it's a very easy thing to do. Unless, of course, you're lazy. Okay, well, now we go on to the next uh, video here where I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the viewfinder looks like on the other camera here that I have uh, unfortunately that that one uh, needs a lot of cleaning inside you'll see that uh, it's quite it has quite a bit of dust and another uh, smut all over the mirror so what's gonna what you're gonna see on that one is gonna be just a photograph that I'm gonna be swinging back and forth and you'll be able to see the bubble level inside the uh, the viewfinder there oh yes I forgot to mention one other thing um, the uh, settings on this here the recommended settings of about uh, 6.3 at, at 50 at 1 50th of a second here that are also recommended here on the uh, the cover as you can see it's rated for Kodachrome which has not been made since uh, 2009. Uh, the uh, the one this one is uh, set for is a uh, Kodachrome ASA number 10, which hasn't been made uh, according to what I've seen since 1959. 
so those settings are not accurate if you're going to use uh, today's film what you need to do is uh, go ahead and get yourself a light meter and uh, use that in instead of these uh, recommended settings even though they're pretty close uh, just uh, just so you get some uh, good pictures on there and so that they're not overexposed okay well let's go ahead and go into the uh, viewfinder and see what that looks like <laughs> 